we know that Africa has the fastest rate of urban growth globally. In less than 15 years, by 2035, half of Africa's population will be living in cities and urban areas. Between now and 2035, we expect 380 million persons to be added to Africa's urban population. But there are not enough jobs in the formal sectors in the city. And this is a challenge because uh, it requires equally swift measures and responses to plan and manage urbanization. We have enormous variety over the continent because different countries are in different stages of economic development. What really sets it apart is the youthful population in Africa's cities and towns. With our youthful population and most of them involved in precarious and makeshift entrepreneurial work, we have to grow the scale and the scope of businesses in African cities. 60% of the GDP of the continent is now produced in cities. In other words, if you don't address the challenges that are facing the cities, you will put into jeopardy the whole economy of Africa. Only Africa, which is not so much embedded in this system, can adopt a different trajectory, more sustainable, more carbon responsible with a minimum footprint on the environment. The challenges of the African continents are multiple. They include uh, the informal housing uh, and the housing issue, which is about 50 million of uh, affordable housing gap on the continent. There's also infrastructure uh, deficiencies uh, on all sorts from water, sanitation, uh, roads, uh, solid waste and others. There's of course the question of climate change, which is impacting especially the poor population that are living at the periphery of the cities. When you talk about inclusivity, you are talking about rights to the city, you are talking about integration, you are talking about employment. If you talk about uh, safety, we're talking about urban security, we're talking about transportation, and we're talking about health especially the medium, the small and medium settlements. The big issue is that there is not much data covering them. So there is the need for emphasis on creating a database for the small and medium sized cities so that action can be taken. Figuring out how to do national urban planning in a way that addresses green industrialization and addresses climate change adaptation is the magic that is required for governments to be effective in dealing with cities and urbanization. They've got to empower city governments to do their jobs. The lifeblood of cities would be voice, that, that people within African cities are allowed in their associations and various forms of collective activity to give expression to civic capacity and civic perspective on governance and the running of their cities. It would be very important for African governments to recognize the economic potential of urbanization and also to integrate urban and spatial development into their national economic planning policies and investments. Mm -hmm.